In today's video, we're going to talk about 10 tips that you need to know before you play Animal Crossing New Horizons. People of the internet, Retro Raconteur here, and welcome back to another Animal Crossing New Horizons video. These are tips for getting started that will help new players enjoy some of the best parts of Animal Crossing. Now, let's get into the tips. Number one, your island name is permanent. One of your very first tasks in Animal Crossing will be to name your island. While there are a number of things in New Horizons you can tweak and change along the way, your island name isn't one of them. So be sure to brainstorm first and go with something you'll be happy with for the long haul. If you plan on using any of the game's online features, such as visiting other islands, you should know that others will be able to see the name of your island, so probably best to go with something that won't embarrass you later on. Your island name will appear often and be referenced in conversation between you and other villagers. If you're having trouble, you can always look to the internet for some inspiration. There are even random name generators you can try. I'll throw a link to one of these down in the description below. And as a little bonus tip here, it's also worth noting you cannot change your name or birthday either. Number two, you can change your island layout, eventually. In addition to picking your island name, you'll also get to choose your island's initial layout. Pay close attention to the location of your bodies of water. This will be important for the early game because you won't have a way to cross over rivers or climb cliffs until a bit later in the game. You'll be stuck with this layout for quite some time, but you can change it once you unlock terraforming, which is the ability to edit your island's cliffs and bodies of water, but also to add entirely new ones. To unlock this, you'll need to get your island's rating up to at least three stars. I actually have a video on getting your island to five stars, and the tips are mostly the same for getting to three stars. I'll include an interactive card here on the top right of your screen, which you can click to check out that video. Number three, pay off your tent early. The beauty of a game like Animal Crossing is it doesn't really force you to do anything. There are nudges and hints here and there, but the game lets you go at your own pace, doing what you want to do. One task I do recommend, though, that you try and complete quickly is paying off your tent. The game doesn't really open up until you have a home of your own to furnish and decorate. You'll actually pay off your tent using Nook Miles rather than Bells, which is the game's more widely used currency. Paying off your tent using Nook Miles acts as a tutorial of sorts for introducing you to the Nook Miles system. You can use your Nook phone at any time to see what current Nook Miles challenges you have. Each challenge you complete will earn you miles. The amount varies depending on the challenge. Once you have a house to call your own, you can also use it to store extra items. Your first house will have 80 storage slots, but by the time you make the final house upgrade, which will be well into the game, you'll have a staggering 1,600 item slots for storage. Number four, expand your pockets ASAP. One of the more frustrating parts of the early game is just how quickly your pockets will start to fill up with items. You'll be delighted to know that you can purchase two upgrades to expand your pockets. After you've paid off your tent, I would recommend focusing on these two upgrades. You'll need to visit residence services in the center of town and access the computer kiosk in the corner. From here, you can purchase a pocket organization guide using Nook Miles. 5,000 Nook Miles may seem expensive, but it's absolutely worth it. The next upgrade will be called Ultimate Pocket Stuffing and will cost 8,000 Nook Miles. Again, totally worth it. Trust me, after a few weeks with the game, you'll have more Nook Miles than you can possibly know what to do with. Unless you want to go on a crazy number of villager hunts, which I wouldn't blame you if you did. After those two upgrades, you'll have four rows with a total of 40 item slots. Number five, buy a slingshot. The first chance you get to buy a slingshot from Nook's Cranny, you should do it. If you've noticed the floating presence flying high above your head, you should know that the slingshot is the only way to retrieve them. These presents may contain clothing, DIY recipes, furniture, or even 30,000 bells. Balloons always have a distinct sound moving through the air as they approach, and you can spot their shadow along the ground. Just be careful shooting them down if it's near a body of water, because it's actually possible to completely lose out on a present. Number six, take your time. This may seem like a throwaway tip here, but honestly guys, it could also be the most important one because as fun and addicting as Animal Crossing can be, I truly believe it's an experience best enjoyed over the course of months rather than days. Some folks choose to time travel by altering the system clock on the Nintendo Switch, and if you do, that's entirely up to you. For me personally though, I prefer no time travel whatsoever. It really helps to preserve one of Animal Crossing's most unique qualities in that the island truly feels like a living, breathing world that's continuing on even when you're not there. 
So prioritize what you want and go at your own pace. If you want to spend weeks building a theme park and ignoring everything else, go for it. Not that I've done that or anything. All the tutorials online and videos you see here on YouTube, this one included, will be here waiting for you when you're ready to take on even more challenges. Number seven, find your money rock. As you start to get to know your island, you'll learn where your rocks are located. You can have up to six rocks total. Now, most of your rocks when struck with an axe or shovel will give you materials such as stone, iron nuggets, or maybe even a gold nugget on occasion. Once per day, however, one of the rocks will give you money instead of materials. If you're able to strike the rock a total of eight times in rapid succession, you'll receive a total of 16,400 bells. Now to get that full amount, you can try digging a few holes behind you to help stabilize your position. In my case here, I already have paths here, so instead I have to lay down a few mannequins. You'll also wanna make sure the rock isn't next to any flowers or other objects as they would prevent bells from dropping in that spot. And a little bonus tip here, guys, if you accidentally destroy a rock, which you can do by eating fruit and then hitting the rock, don't worry about losing out on one of your six rocks because it will actually reappear the next day, albeit in a completely different location. Number eight, money does grow on trees. In addition to a special rock each day, you'll also start to notice spots on your island that appear to shine or glow. Digging in this location will give you 1,000 bells. A nice little surprise, of course. But if you wanna really maximize these special locations, you can then replant bells into the same glowing space rather than filling the hole back up. If you plant a stack of 10,000 bells, your tree will grow over the next several days into a special money tree. The tree will triple your money. So if you plant 10,000 bells, you'll receive 30,000 bells once the tree fully matures. You can plant less than 10,000 bells if you prefer, but the money that grows is always based on the original amount planted. So if you only plant a thousand bells, then you would get 3000 bells in return. You don't wanna go over 10,000 bells though, as the tree will never give back more than 30,000 bells total. Number nine, learn the crafting system. Fairly early in the game, Tom Nook will introduce you to the game's crafting system. You'll collect DIY recipes from numerous sources, which you can then use at his crafting table. You can also make your own crafting tables, which can be placed just about anywhere on your island, including inside your home. Crafting is one of the best ways to get furniture items that fit the overall theme you're going for both in your home and on your island. Even if you don't necessarily want a specific craftable item, you can always sell them back to Nook's Cranny. Crafted items almost always earn you more than selling materials by themselves. Oh, and you can also craft fish bait, which is super useful if you're trying to catch fish in specific locations. If you're new to Animal Crossing, go ahead and leave me a comment down below and let me know your favorite things so far, and if you have any questions about the early game, I'll be happy to answer them. Number 10, buy turnips on Sundays. If you're looking to become an Animal Crossing millionaire several times over, then you'll definitely want to play the stock market. The stock market is Animal Crossing's simplified version of our real world stock market. On Sundays between 5 a.m. and 12 p.m., Daisy May will visit your island offering to sell you turnips. These turnips range in price, but they're almost always worth buying. I have a full video breaking down all the secrets about buying and selling turnips. But just to keep things simple here, as long as you don't forget to sell your turnips by the next Sunday, there's plenty of opportunity throughout the week to sell them for a great price, either on your own island or by visiting a friend. If you're interested in the turnip video, you'll find it in my Animal Crossing Beginners playlist, which you should see on the right side of your screen right now. That's gonna be it for me and today's video. I will talk to you guys again soon.